I don't know about you guys, but the major was freaking fantastic from my point of view. Sure, things could have been better. Sure, certain aspects didn't go as planned, but overall, when you look back at the major, the challenger stage, the legend stage, and the playoff combined, it was a fantastic major. A major with a ton of surprises as well. Let's be honest, none of the favorites did well. Face went out of the group stage. Navi struggled massively in the group stage and went out in the quarterfinal. Vitality out of the group stage. Cloud9 choked in the quarterfinal. There's so much to dive into. Overall, all I want to say in this little intro is that I love the fact that we have Counter-Strike back as a regular thing at the majors. COVID was annoying because we had online Counter-Strike, we didn't have these big events. The fact that we're now back having majors two times a year makes me insanely, insanely happy. Yeah, sure, we'll dive into the things that could have been better. Sure, we'll dive into some of the teams that didn't do well enough. But overall, I think we can all agree that we love the fact that Counter-Strike is now back, going strong once again. Three majors in a row, no abruptions, no COVID, no nothing. Just pure Counter-Strike and pure passion. If you want to see and if you want to hear my take on how the different teams did, some of the aspects that could have been better at the major, make sure to subscribe and make sure to watch the rest of the video. I would appreciate it greatly. Pip, over and out. Now let's dive into it. Let's start with the challenger states first. Let's talk about some of the teams that didn't impress and didn't really do as good as we would have liked them to do. We may as well start with Serious Nation. Yeah, they didn't do too well. Came into the major with, I guess, decent expectations of making it to the Legends. Had some decent results leading up to it. The major qualifier was okay. The way they played at Blast was somewhat okay. But the performance in the arena, not so good. The support from the crowd was spot on. We'll get back to that. Both them and Imperial deserved a lot of praises for how they handled the crowd and how they animated the crowd, of course. But in terms of results, Zero Zero Nation and Imperial didn't do well. I would argue Imperial did slightly better because they came super, super close to beat Cloud9. Cloud9, who went 0-2 in the Challenger stage, they were this close actually exiting the tournament as one of the first teams together with Zero Zero Nation. But they wanted it differently. They made two massive comebacks against Imperial and sent Imperial out of the tournament together with Zero Zero Nation as an O3 team. IHC, Evil Geniuses, Greyhound, we didn't have much, you know, we didn't have a lot of expectations for those teams. So the fact that they went out in a 1-3 position wasn't really a surprise. The fact that Greyhound got a win against Cloud9, I think was a bit surprising. So well done to the Aussie boys right there. But overall, not a lot of surprises. Gamer Legion, OG and 9C, they were all the 2-3 teams. They respectively lost to Fnatic, Vitality, and Cloud9. And let's be honest, when you listen to those names, Fnatic, Vitality, Cloud9, you'd expect those teams to go through as well. It does feel a little bit sad for Gamer Legion, who had a good qualifier, who did a decent job in the beginning of the Challenger stage. They went from a 2-0 team to a 2-3 team, so three losses in a row. 9C as well, they had a good opportunity to make it through in front of the crowd. Even though the crowd cheered for them as much as possible, it wasn't meant to be for 9C. They had to bow out together with OG as well, who I think had one of the toughest draws throughout the tournament. Tournament. They faced, I would say, only quality opponents after the first game. They won against Greyhound. From that point onwards, they faced Fnatic, Furia, IHC, and Vitality. Not easy to beat Vitality in a 2-2 game. Are you also super tired of people trying to scam you all the time whenever you're trying to sell or buy a new knife? Then I'd advise you to head over to Skin Baron. Skin Baron is a legit German registered company, a marketplace that on average has skins for sale 30% cheaper than on the Steam market. I use Skin Baron and I do it because I don't want to worry about people scamming me. So hell with gamers. Teams who progressed, well, we may as well start from the top. Mouse went 3-0. Mouse, who we're going to talk more about in the Legend stage and in the playoff. Spoiler alert, they did well. Bad News Eagles, again, massive surprise. The dudes from Kosovo did a fantastic job going 3-0. No one expected that. You know, no one with a brain expected that. Of course, their fans expected it. Fair enough. You want a fanboy team? Go for it, man. Support them. But no dude out there with a brain expected them to go 3-0. And that's why it's so, so impressive. Well done to Bad News Eagles for playing another fantastic Challenger States and booking a spot in the Legend States as a 3-0 team. Wow. Outsiders, a big and Furia all made it as a 3-1 team, and a set Fnatic Vitality and Cloud9 as a 3-2 team. No real big surprises here. I think the majority of the teams that you wanted to go through went through. Furia, big, Outsiders, etc., etc. I had big not going through because they were playing with a stand-in, so I want to give them the credit for doing that. But overall, I feel like the challenge stage was somewhat, you know, predictable with a couple of upsets, but not that many. Now, if we talk about the legend states, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a break. What on earth happened? Moving on to the legend states. At this point, you know, my pickings was doing well. All you guys on YouTube supporting. Yeah, Jake, have you got it? Woo, let's go. Everything was great, but at the legend states, everything up. 
That was a rough run. No one could have predicted what happened. So let's take it from the bottom and up. First and foremost, Face Clan going 0-3. The reigning major champions, the champions from the PGL Antwerp Major in 2022, the beginning of the year. The IM Karovice, the Cologne winners. The team who's been beating everyone. They went 0-3. They recorded a loss against Cloud9, a game where they were leading 13-4, and then they ended up losing 16-14. A loss to Vitality, 16-8, I believe. And then they lost to Bad News Eagles, 2-1. A massive, massive surprise. They were even leading on the third deciding map on Mirage 14 to 9 or 14 to 10. So overall, when you look at the results from Face Clan, you're having a big lead against Cloud9. You choked. You had a shitty game against Vitality. You choked. And you had a massive lead against BNE and you choked. Just not that tournament. Just not that tournament. And I think they were they were the first to react as well. Kerrigan came out and said he takes the responsibility on him. His fault. He went out saying that on Twitter. And I respect that. It was not a good tournament for Face Clan, but shit happens, let's be honest. But yeah, a massive surprise. Of course, I had face clan to go through to the playoffs. So pick him. Bye bye. Already there. NIP as well, going 0 3. Uh, I described it on my own Twitter as they didn't show up. They didn't even catch the plane for real. I don't know what the hell was going on for NIP. I actually had high expectations. I think Hampus is a great player. I think Broland is a great player. I think Ress is a great player. I think Elixir B is a great in game leader. And, and S Attack is okay. Um, there's too much quality on NIP to go 0 3. Uh, losing to Fnatic, Outsiders, and Sprout 0 2 disappointing. Sprout went 1-3. Not too much to talk about here. We didn't anticipate much from them. Bad News Eagles went 1-3 again in the Legend States. I think we went back to normality. They played a decent Legend States in the fact that they beat Face Claim, but they didn't really come close to beat anyone else, let alone Navi in, in the last game. And then the big surprise as well in the 0-3, or oh, sorry, in the 1-3 category, Vitality. The team who coming into the major were ranked number one in the world. Saivu, Dupree, Magix, Sphinx, and Apex. They went 1-3 and, and didn't qualify for the playoffs. That was a disaster for Vitality. And they did it by having a weird tournament. First game was against Na'Vi. I think they lost 25-21 to 21 in a triple overtime. Then they absolutely beat Face Clan. Big time, 16-8. And you're like, okay, those are good results for Vitality. So third game, third game in that tournament for Vitality. Against Mouse, you're like, yeah, they should be beating Mouse. Nah, they lost to Mouse. And okay, Mouse had a good tournament overall. Last game against Ince. They won two games against Ents, right? There's no more excuses. Ents didn't have a good tournament, and they still lost 2-0 to Ents. So that was a disaster for Vitality, unfortunately, out of the tournament. The 2-3 teams, Ents, as said, didn't have a good tournament. They lost their last game to Mouse, fan square. Mouse had a good tournament. Team Liquid lost to Spirit again. If you're serious about your team, and if you're serious about paying your players that much money, I would argue that Team Liquid should have beaten Spirit. No excuses right here. A disappointing major for them, even though it's not a disaster per se, but still, you should be able to. And Big, Big went two and three with a stand-in. I want to argue that Big were the best teams of the team who didn't make it, or at least the surprising, most surprising team of the teams who didn't make it by going two, three, playing with a stand-in. I wasn't rooting for, for Big that much. I didn't think it would be possible for them to do much damage with a stand-in, but I got to tip my hat and say, well done to the German boys for playing a decent, more than decent major despite having the problems with the roster i really think that's cool cool to see from big now to the teams who made the playoff mouse made the playoff navi made the playoff and team spirit made the playoff all as a 3-2 team though navi as a 3-2 team i know face went out i know vitality went out i know nip went out but come on navi 3-2 you're supposed to win the major that was always the first warning and the first sign of navi not having a great tournament spirit making it over liquid fine mouse making it over ends fine we got him fnatic went 3-1 outsiders went 3-1 and heroic went 3-1 all beating respectable teams in their last game heroic beating liquid 2-1 outsiders beating mouse 2-0 and of course, Fnatic beating Big 2-0. You know, again, the best teams made it, but surprising to see Fnatic, surprising to see Spirit, surprising to see Outsiders being so demanding. And then you had the two teams going 3-0. Cloud9, who turned it around, as I said, in the Challenger stage, they were 0-2 and they were down on both the maps against Imperial. They turned it around and went 3-0 in the Legend stage. And you're like, okay, then are the favorites to win the tournament. Beating Face, beating Navi, beating Heroic. What a run. Teams to beat to make the major playoff. Well done to Cloud9. Fury as well. Beat Ents, beat Spirit, and beat Big. You'd argue that that's a, an easy way to go 3-0, especially when you compare to Cloud9. Beating Face, beating Navi, beating Heroic, three of the best teams in the world, or beating Ents, beating Spirit, beating Big. What a stand-in. Fury got an easy time, but Fury also delivered in the playoffs, so I won't hammer down on them. So that's it. That's our eight teams making it to the playoff. They all had some decent results. They also had some hiccups, but overall, you know, surprising that we didn't get to see Vitality, Liquid, 
an IP and face. Massive surprise, to be honest. But apart from that, I, I guess we got the eight best teams in the playoff. You can't argue against Mouse having a good tournament. You can't argue against Spirit being competitive. You can't argue against Fnatic being decent. Outside as well, you all know what happened. But let's talk about the playoff now, because that was another surprising stage. Jesus. Alrighty, let's dive into the playoff. Now, coming into the playoff, as I said, a couple of teams has emerged as favorites. Obviously, Na'Vi getting into the playoff despite a rookie group stage, one of the favorites. They were facing on Furia in the very first game. We'll get back to that. Cloud9, one of the favorites coming in as well after going 3-0 and beating a lot of the good teams. And I would argue Heroic. Those three teams we knew had the quality to win the entire thing. Then you'd argue that Mouse, Fnatic, Outsider, Spirit, and Furia, to some extent, would be the outsiders. But we may as well take it from the top and walk down. Cloud9 versus Mouse. What a game that was. What a game that was. That's when we finally realized how good Mouse actually were at this tournament. Cloud9 started off well. It was a good fought match back and forth. Mouse won the second map and forced Cloud9 into a third map on Ancient. On Ancient, Cloud9 were leading 5-0 on the CT side. And I thought to myself, that's it. Game over. Shiro's too good. Exile's too good. It all starting to to ramble now for Mouse. And from 5-0 up, everything went to shit for Cloud9. Everything went wrong. From that moment, I think they only got three or four more rounds in that game. They lost 16-8, 16-9, and that was it. Mouse won 2-1 two -two and completely demolished Cloud9 on that third map, which caused Shiro, Hobbit, and the boys to once again exit a major tournament, feeling unfulfilled in a way. We even saw Shiro, he was hawking Hobbit, he was crying, and he was feeling devastated, which I totally understand, because for my money, Shiro had been the best player throughout the entire major. Once again, they find themselves not able to finish what they came there to do, which is a disappointment for Cloud9. Crumbled, choked, call it what you want, but couldn't beat Mouse when it mattered the most. Mouse into the semifinal. The other semifinal was Fnatic versus Outsider on the first day. And to be honest, I had Outsiders as a favorite in that one. Fnatic, they got to the playoff without really impressing me that much, you know. Still a good solid run, a good solid result for a relatively new team. Lots of potential shown, but against Outsiders, I had Outsiders winning that game. And honestly speaking, Outsiders, they played themselves into a favorite role by beating Fnatic 2-0 in a very convincing fashion. Jame and the boys didn't break a sweat in that game. Yeah, at some moments it was somewhat competitive, but outside of that, felt like Outsiders were just the better team, booking a spot into the semifinal. Heroic versus Team Spirit, more of the same. Heroic demolished Team Spirit on the first map. Second map got slightly closer, but only towards the end. I believe Heroic were leading 13 to 8 on the CT side of Orpas. And at that point, you're like, yeah, that's not going to be close. But somehow, some way, Spirit managed to come back. And I think the final score was 16 14 for Heroic on the, the second map. But again, a 2 0 victory, it doesn't get much cleaner than that. And that was also another indication for us that, okay, Heroic are one of the favorites to win the major. Now, game of the quarterfinals, Navi taking on Furia. That was the first time we saw this crazy, crazy crowd going absolutely ballistics inside that arena. Insane atmosphere from start to finish. I hardly even believe what I was witnessing. Sure, the arena was a little bit empty, and we'll get to that later when we talk about the crowd and the learnings from the tournament, but my goodness, was that a good vibe. I've never seen a Counter-Strike Counter game with that much emotion, with that much empathy, with that much noise surrounding the players. We've all seen the pictures of Navi walking in there, Simple doing like this, booing to the crowd, and the crowd booing back. We even saw Simple flipping the finger to a crowd that apparently spit on one of his teammates, which of course is a no-brainer, not okay. But I will say, you know, a couple of idiots is not going to remove the entire feeling and sense that the Brazilian crowd were somewhat respectful towards Furia and towards Navi in the game. Of course, you're cheering for your home team, and apart from the guys who spat on the Navi players, which of course unacceptable, it felt like it was a a good a good atmosphere inside the arena. Simple playing to the crowd, the crowd responding, you know, in a respectful, hateful way. It was perfect for, for my money. It was a good game. Navi crumbled. Navi and Simple crumbled. It's the first time I've ever seen Simple that much out of it. At, at a moment in that third game, he was like sitting like this, and you could just almost look at him thinking he's sick, right? He was affected by the crowd, and Furia won the game. I would say Furia and the crowd won the game. Furia played a good game of Counter Strike, but at the end of the day, Furia won the game two to one, and without the crowd, it wouldn't have happened like, like that. It, it just wouldn't have happened like that. Navi crumpled and Furia into the semi-final. That gives us Mouse vs. Outsiders, Heroic vs. Furia. Let's take Mouse vs. Outsiders first. Again, a game that Outsiders won 2-1, booked a spot into the grand final. 
Looking by the scorelines, you'd be argued, yeah, that was a close game. Mouse did a good fight. Not at all. Mouse got absolutely demolished in that game. They won four out of six pistol rounds. Still only managed to make it barely competitive. Outsiders on the two maps they won, convincing. On the one map Mouse won, it was a bit of a choke, a bit of a throw from Outsiders. So... I don't want to take anything away from Mouse, who had a fantastic tournament semi-final as well. But in the semi-final, we saw that Outsiders were the better team. And for the second time in the tournament, they would beat Mouse in a best of three, booking a spot in the final. Which leads us to the Heroic versus Furrier game. Another fucking banger! Again, Furrier coming out with the crowd behind him, demolishing Heroic on the first map. Second map, Heroic is up 15 to 5 on Ancient. And Furia makes the comeback. They take 10 rounds in a row. The arena is exploding. The outside area of the arena is exploding. 18,000 fans inside the arena. 10,000 fans outside the arena. Everything is exploding. In the overtime, Furia even wins the first round. So essentially, they won 11 rounds in a row. And then Hero come back. Hero wins it in overtime on the second map. Forces it into a third map. The crowd is not happy for it. And on the third map... It wasn't even a competition. Nuke, too team play heavy. Furia couldn't get it done. And Heroic absolutely demolished and destroyed the party for Furia. Sending them out of the tournament. And a third to fourth place finisher. Booking a spot in the grand final themselves. Heroic going up against Outsiders. Again, amazing atmosphere on that second map. Ancient, I've never witnessed anything like it. But it wasn't meant to be for Furia. As, as much as I respect for what they did throughout the major, with the crowd behind them, with the passion they played with, they weren't good enough to win the major. They didn't have the level to win the major. Cesarado had the, the level to win the major. He was uh, absolutely outstanding, I'd say. But Fury didn't have it. Gives it the final between Heroic and Outsiders. And as much as I want to talk about this final, it was a little bit underwhelming. The crowd didn't really show up for the grand final. There was a lot of people in there, but not with the same vibe. And I guess we're spoiled that we were used to see Furia play, so it didn't feel as good. In a way, we'll talk about that later. And then the game itself, Heroic didn't show up. Heroic simply didn't show up. They wouldn't say they choked, they just got beaten by a better team on the night and didn't show up whatsoever. Uh, maybe a little bit of a choking, maybe a little bit of nerves. Maybe they felt that the Furia game was, that was it, now, we, now we're ready to win the major and got a bit ahead of themselves. It's, it's hard to describe the players themselves as well. Didn't really know what happened and I sympathize with that. It's, it's hard when you have a game like that. Outsiders winning the major, lifting the trophy. Jame, his second major final. Finally got it going. Kick it as well. He was in a major final together with Jame in 2018-19 in the Star Ladder Berlin Major, losing to Astralis. This time around, they got to lift the trophy. And out of all the teams, FaZe, Navi, Vitality, Cloud9, Heroic, nope. None of them lifted the trophy, but Outsiders did. That was a massive surprise to me. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so let's get to it. The crowd situation has been debated and discussed a lot during the major. I want to try to be as nuanced as I possibly can while also showing you guys that I, I feel very strongly about this. First and foremost, yes, Furia had an amazing home crowd. What we saw during the Furia game against Heroic, what we saw in the quarterfinal from the Furia fans as well, and what we saw in the Legend states and Challenge states as well, let's be honest, that was absolutely outstanding, especially the Legends and the Challenge states. I'm left feeling a little bit unsatisfied about the playoff as I actually feel that the legend stage and the challenger stage was cooler and more emotional in a way than the playoff itself. Some of that is some of the big teams missing, FaZe, Na'Vi not doing well, Cloud9 going out in the quarterfinal, Vitality not being there, etc, etc. But that's just the name of the game, right? They didn't deserve it, they weren't good enough. Part of it is also the crowd. The crowd was so well, so outstanding, so cheerable for all the teams in the legends and challenger and that kind of got missing in the playoff stage unfortunately. And that's the contrast. We got the best of the best when Furia were playing, and we got an underwhelming experience when the other teams were playing. And I buy into people saying that that's not cool. I buy into people saying that Mouse is walking into a semifinal in the biggest game of their career. Not really half filled up arena, not cool. The final Outsiders versus Heroic, I'd argue that half the arena was full, maybe 10,000 people in there. It was okay, but again, it's the biggest games of their career, so you'd like it to be more, you'd like it to be wilder. But we also gotta be honest with ourselves. Did we really consider the situation? Are we really having a nuanced overview? I don't think we were, right? Because we can't have both. We can't have a crowd that goes absolutely ballistic for four hours for Furia and then expect them to do that for eight hours a day or do it the day after for another team. That's not how it works. That's not how it works in football. It's not how it works in any other sports out there. So I would, I would give them the argument that that's understandable to some degree. Another thing I want to argue right here, another thing I want to say, 
important you understand is that I think ESL learned a lot from this event. This was the first time we were in Brazil. They're having a fan zone outside that was more attractive to some players or some people than others, etc. etc. They had fan signings during some of the quarterfinals. I think ESL would do it differently next time around. I'm not saying everything they do is correct. I'm not saying everything they do is wrong. All I'm saying is that it's a learning experience. So I don't really hold any of that to ESL. They messed up on a couple of fronts, I'd argue, and they probably have done a good job in a couple of fronts that we didn't even realize. And that's how it is being a TO. You're always exposed to, to criticism. And I think as long as they look at it, they gather feedback, they learn, I don't have a problem with that. Now, the only thing that is a little bit disappointing is, in, in my book, the fact that you have a, a fan zone outside that is kind of that is competing for the attention inside the arena. I would have loved if that would have been possible to move that into the arena with the signing sessions, etc., etc. But I said, gather feedback, do it better next time. Another thing we need to understand as well as Europeans, as we see a lot of crybabies on Twitter, Reddit, etc., is we always, we always lack the nuances. We always lack the full circle understanding. Why do you think the games were played so early local time in Brazil? No, anyone? All right because they wanted to facilitate us in Europe, because they wanted to put the game in prime hours in Europe. Otherwise, they would play prime hours in Brazil, but they know that a big part of the audience is coming from Europe. So we're the reason why one of the quarterfinals is being played at two o'clock when there's 29 degrees and full sun outside. What would you do? Be inside a half empty arena or be outside with uh, Gaulis, one of your biggest idols, enjoying the sun, drinking beer? All right, think about that. It's so easy to sit home and criticize everything you see. I agree that Certain measurements could have been done to avoid that, but at the end of the day, they tried to accommodate us. They tried to do something good for us that would be ESL, and all we do is shit on them. So at least when you provide your criticism, think full circle. Think full circle instead of being spoiled, like we always are. Anyhow, that's my take on the crowd. Outstanding when Furio were playing, a little bit underwhelming when they were not, but in the Challenger and the Legend stage, that's the best and most exciting Challenger and Legend stage I've ever seen. That's my take at least. So now that I'm done yelling and screaming at you, I just want to say thank you for watching the video. I hope this recap of the major served you well. Feel free to leave a like, leave a comment on what you think about it below. Maybe you take on the crowd situation as well. As said, I stand to be corrected. Maybe I misunderstood a couple of things. Maybe I'm lacking a couple of nuances, but I've really tried to think of it from all different aspects and, and trying to, yeah, to tell you guys how I, I see it from, from my perspective. Anyhow, uh, Great talking to you. Great making this video. I uh, appreciate you guys subscribing to my YouTube channel and that will be the last and final message. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure to ring the bell, guys. The more of you guys who watch my videos within the first couple of minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, etc., the more of you guys who have the notification turned on, the higher there is that we'll get a new audience into the YouTube channel, that we'll get people who are not aware who I am and what I do in here so we can build up a bigger YouTube and Twitch and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, etc. community. So I would appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys around very soon with another video.